All right, this is the fourth lecture for chapters 16 through 17 on energy of old energy that we've always used and looking at potentially at some newer energies. Uh, looking at the efficiencies, and there's a couple ways we could make some improvements here, and you can kind of look on there, is you know maybe using co generation, which we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, increasing the fuel efficiency of our cars, uh, which is something that is, is coming up in conversations uh, all the time. And I think I'll have a slide over here eventually that will uh, look at that. Here's one. Uh, this is a car that's just coming into the market right now. It's uh, the Ford Maverick, and it really has a lot of people surprised uh, based on that fuel efficiency. It's a smaller truck, um, so let's get that out of the way. But it does a lot of things that you want a truck to do. Uh, but they threw a hybrid motor in it, which means it has both an internal combustion engine and a battery. And between the two of them, it can generate roughly uh, 40 miles per gallon, which for a truck is about twice as good as they generally will average. And of course, it's relatively cheap too. So people are excited about that. Uh, but the efficiency, if you were to uh, increase the efficiency by putting a battery, a hybrid engine, into most vehicles, you could uh, substantially increase the mileage uh, for them. And this is all the while by keeping an internal combustion engine in the car, which uh, currently a lot of people still appreciate, um, but we are slowly making that transfer over to more electric vehicles. This is just looking again at that fuel economy. And it's interesting to look over in the 80s to the early 2000s, uh, the efficiency of the miles per gallon, it actually went down, which is quite interesting. And now, of course, vehicles got bigger, which is probably the, the major reason for that. But you can see in the last 15 some odd years that the efficiency has gone up quite a bit, uh, which, is, which is fantastic. We are moving in the right direction. That little acronym, you can see the, the CAFE standards is something that you, if you listen for it, you will hear it um, a little bit. Mostly you hear this out of California. Um, they tend to dictate the, the mileage or a lot of the changes that take place in the auto industry. So just ways again to increase efficiency and we've talked a little bit about this. Uh, a lot of it is again not necessarily by some of the engineering and the fuel generation but it's simply by not doing certain things or doing some things better as far as like insulation and just not wasting the energy that we have. So even like in our homes, uh, most homes are not terribly efficient. Uh, they have proven by construction methods that you can make homes which are quite efficient and you don't need that much energy to keep them warm or cool depending on the year. Uh, but a lot of it, again, the energy that we use is wasted. This is just kind of a silly example. Um, it's actually in the book that I reference quite a bit. Uh, the house made of straw. So it's sort of like Little, little Red Riding Hood. Uh, that, that house is actually made of straw bales. Uh, interesting, it, it's supposed to be rather efficient, but I, you know, I have to imagine over time there's, there would be some, some potential problems in a home styled this way. This is actually out of that same book. Maybe this is familiar to you. This is in downtown Plymouth. So it's a book that's used around the country. It's a quite popular book. And for whatever reason, I don't know, this is a picture of downtown, downtown Plymouth. Uh, what this shows is an infrared picture showing heat loss. And those uh, white and reds are typically location in a building where heat is lost. So the red colors and the white colors is showing um, heat escaping. And that's typically where you find a lot of your heat loss. Uh, again, just looking as far as why this is, and currently it's just because it's been cheap. And you can look at gasoline as an example. Uh, people don't tend to care about the, the mileage that their car gets. When people buy a vehicle, that's usually not something they're considering. They're looking at a variety of other things of why they want one car over the other. And then once they get it and the cost of gasoline goes up, then people will get a little more excited about it. But it's something we know ahead of time. We know what the the potential problems could be. We can get vehicles that get better mileage, but it's a choice we typically don't take into consideration. 
these are just categories which we've referred to and you guys will do a project on this eventually um, looking at renewable resources which are the ones in the bottom looking at our renewables uh, you can see how different places have various amounts of their energy that they obtain from renewable resources the eu uh, roughly about 38 percent that they get uh, costa rica just as a very small example uh, they get almost all of the energy and that was has been a goal of theirs uh, china is continuously pushing uh, production of renewable energy resources uh, even though they have a huge source of coal fired power plants natural gas power plants as well but they are aiming to get you know a certain amount 25 percent of their energy production from renewable resources and you can see on and on there another example denmark uh this little picture here is showing like how a home residential home should be laid out or could be laid out and i know my home is not uh, designed in such a way where it should most homes should face the long part of the house should face the south with the windows facing in that direction to take advantage of the passive solar heat uh, my house does not it faces the the east and as far as solar panels go uh, it would not be appropriate to put them on there because you don't have this flat side of the roof uh, facing the south where the sun is predominant um, that is ideally where you're going to have your house facing again is the south and we kind of talked about this you can pause it and take a look at those pictures if you like cooling your home ideally as all as far as the windows go you would ideally have windows on opposite sides so you can get a cross ventilation going in one window and going through the house out the other side uh, having trees that the picture showed earlier that provide shade in the summertime <clears throat> but then in the wintertime they don't have leaves and the sunlight's going right on through and this again is just the the usage of energy for um, various applications so you can pause this and kind of go through that on your own price this is quite interesting and it's changed since I've been teaching this in the last so many odd years uh, the cost for energy resources has actually changed quite a bit you can see how coal is actually one of the more expensive things which is driving uh, energy companies away from it and towards natural gas uh, so there's a natural tendency to use less and less coal in the United States uh, but looking at some of the other interesting ones on there as far as onshore winds and uh, photovoltaic solar uh, those costs have been directly competing so we're seeing this move towards the electrical companies themselves installing installing a lot of wind and solar for energy production uh, just to mention just for my house I um, asked my energy company DTE to switch all of my energy production over to uh, wind uh, and it doesn't cost me that much more a month so I'm asking the, the electric company to invest in wind energy they do it for solar as well but I'm, I'm directing them to do it for wind and that gives me the benefit of obtaining my share of electricity all from wind so my my carbon footprint for that is zero this is just another example of um, an energy production which is sort of indirect solar where these are all mirrors fo focusing on that focal point up in the tower and it's a heat source it's like a salt solution and they use that to heat up water and just like a coal fire power plant or nuclear power plant they use that to generate electricity and usually of course this is going to work best in very sunny locations like the desert Uh, looking at hydro uh, again this is a larger resource out in the west of the country and it's pretty much tapped out uh, we've found and utilized most of the hydro water energy production that we can in the in the United States and if anything we've actually been decommissioning a lot of the power plants uh, because of the ecological problems that sometimes are associated with them and we can do better 
by using other resources like wind and solar. Okay, this is a good place to take a break for the fourth lecture.